Hey, I'm Mike. Welcome back to the Building Guide. I'm going to talk about the heating systems of our demo house today. Um, first of all, remember we have a very well insulated house here, super thick walls, very airtight building envelope, and we have top quality windows. So we're not losing a whole lot of heat. Um, and when you don't lose a lot of heat, you don't need to add a lot of heat. So first of all, we have sort of three heating systems. Number one would be the windows. Uh, more than 50% of the heat that we need for this house comes in through the windows. That's our primary heat source. Um, second of all, we have a radiant floor. So it's a concrete slab on grade, very well insulated, but we do have radiant floor heat. Uh, mostly because that's our contact point with the house, right? That's my feet are touching it. If my feet are cold, life sucks. I'm going to jack up the temperature in the house to compensate. So we don't really count on the radiant floor to heat the air of the house. That's just more that, so that when we do our air heating, we're not adding a whole lot more because of our feet. So secondary, but really the primary heat source of the house is the Mr. Slim ductless heat pump up on the wall there. Um, now if you don't know what a heat pump is, it's really important to wrap your head around this first. So uh, heat pumps work a little bit like your refrigerator does. Your fridge doesn't generate cold. That's not what's happening there. What's happening is you've got an enclosed space. It's condensing the heat and moving it to the other side. That's a very efficient process and very different than generating heat. Um, so the heat pump's doing that. What it's doing is it's taking the, the heat from the outside air, condensing it, pumping it into your house. That's the term heat pump. Now, it sort of can sort of seem counterintuitive at first to be using winter air to heat your house. But uh, any time the air is above minus 273 Celsius, which is absolute zero, there is some heat present, so you can, you can get it. Um, heat pumps actually used to, used, not too long ago, they didn't really, they weren't that great. There's a technology that was emerging. They used to be only good to about minus 10 Celsius, and that's not even that long ago. Uh, but anyway, the Mitsubishi's come a real long way. This is a good down to minus 25 Celsius. So that process of condensing heat and moving it is a lot more efficient and therefore more affordable than the concept of generating heat. Uh, like electric resistance heat, if you think of like, well, baseboard heaters, the radiant floor, boilers, your toaster, hair dryers, this is electric resistance heat. It's going to give you basically one watt of, of energy is going to give you one watt of heat. Um, heat pumps actually give you, for every watt of energy, on average, they give you three watts of heat. So you're getting three times more heat out of them for the amount of money and energy you put into them. And that, that efficiency fluctuates. Like you, As you get closer to that minus 25 mark, it's not working as well. It's still better than electric resistance and it's still, still giving you heat. Um, but as I say, like the more heat's available, the more you can get. And you think about that, if you think about like, for example, like a, a damp sponge, if I, you know, it's a lot of moisture, I squeeze it and water comes out. Well, if there's not much moisture in there, I gotta squeeze a lot harder to get water out, right? Heat pumps are doing the same thing. So basically is the colder it gets, it stops losing its, it stops having that efficiency. And that's why they sort of have a cutoff point where they're really not uh, working for you anymore. Um, and after that, you can actually add auxiliary systems where you have sort of a boiler that'll kick in and provide heat for you in those situations where, you know, it's minus 30 for a week straight and you just, the heat pump's not giving you what you need. But we're also not really worried about that because here, as I say, we have a combined system. We've got the radiant floor as a backup. Um, but the whole point is that it's, it's going to be more expensive to heat with the floor than with the heat pump. So... I want to use that as much as possible to heat the air of the house. Not every house is going to get away with having sort of a single source, centrally located heat source. Uh, you got to be a super high performing house to sort of get away with that. Uh, Mitsubishi has a bigger model called the Zuba Central that does an entire house. Uh, we're just fortunate enough that because of the, the, how little heat we need, we're getting away with it with the smallest unit they make, the Mr. Slim. Uh, ductless heat pump and because of the systems in the house um, our ventilation system ceiling fans keeps the air moving so the whole place sort of works as a system and that's how we can get away with popping heat into one single place compared to for example in most houses 
The windows are you know, double pane windows, the walls aren't very thick, so the exterior house is actually quite cold. And that's why you're going to often see uh, heat vents underneath windows, baseboard heaters there as well, because that's where the cold is, right? And you've got to pop it all the way around the house. It's just different. This house is, the, the whole energy strategy, heat pump was a big part of it for us, not losing the heat, so we didn't need to add a lot. Some of the things that are really good about this particular model, the Mitsubishi, uh, one thing is the, it's got a 3D IC sensor. So it's actually, the unit is tracking you, like it's where your heat signature, so it's going to send heat or cooling directly at you. If you're sitting reading a book on a hot day, you know, you, your whole, it doesn't, it's not blowing, it doesn't have to blow heat throughout your whole house, or sorry, air conditioning, it could shoot it right at you, right where you are. And then when you end up vacating the room, it senses that, and after a certain period of time, it goes into a more efficient, uh, lower cooling mode. And what it's doing then, it's not, uh, it's not cycling on and off as much as normal or conventional air conditioning systems. And because it doesn't have that on and off cycle, what it's doing is only at a low base rate, which is actually quite a bit more affordable and more energy efficient. If you think like, for example, a car, uh, if I, starting from a dead stop uses a lot more energy than sort of maintaining a constant pace. So it's, a very, it's in your interest that the machine sort of keeps rolling at a base, at a base energy level. A small unit like this one here was only about 3,000 installed uh, Canadian when we had done it. And, and even if you factor in the, the cost of a radiant floor system as well, those two together are even less than what you would need to spend for a super efficient full house heating and cooling system. It's also a really great option for retrofitting older houses. Uh, because you're not firing ductwork around the house. Like if you have a cold part of a room or you're doing an addition, easy install. Heat pumps are the way to go. So certainly the most uh, efficient heat source out there.